right. So uh, last time uh, we proved this uh, corollary that <coughs> if we have a compact metric space, then the uh, space of uh, continuous functions considered as a subset of subset of bounded uh, functions on X is a closed subset, and since we know that bounded uh, functions form a complete metric space under the supremum metric uh, being a closed subset of that uh, cx becomes uh, complete it's itself so that was our last result uh, today i'll <clears throat> talk about so-called lebeck number lebeck number of a covering of an open covering back maybe open covering uh, and uh, uniform continuity and then i'll talk about as an application uh, of what we have done on compact spaces integrability and so on of functions all right so uh let uh e be a compact compact subset and uh, O alpha an open cover or E. I know that since E is compact, finitely many O alphas cover E. But what I will do is something slightly different than that. I'll do the following. Now for any for any x in x, uh, so x in e, or maybe I know this, uh, let me write first this, then we know this, then e is of course a subset of O alphas, union of O alphas, because it's an open cover. Now I'll do the following, for any x in x, uh, x in e, there is some there is some uh, O alpha, let's say X containing containing X, right? Because X is in E and E is a subset of this union. Therefore, every element of X lies in some uh, element of this family. So let me just uh, label the one. Well, of course, there might be many O alphas, but I choose just one of them containing this element. All right. Now, this is an open set because this is an open cover. Therefore, there should be a ball around this which lies inside this element. So I'll choose a ball like that. Uh, since O alpha X is open, there is some uh, delta x I label also this by x because for each x I'll choose a possibly different epsilon x so that so that uh, x is in this ball because it is the center of this ball and this ball lies in O alpha x all right well then I have this then E which is the union of one point sets in E but each X lies in this ball actually I'll choose even uh, yeah okay this ball lies here but I'll choose epsilon over two ball because epsilon over two ball also contains x, right? So I'll do this, and of course, uh, each of these balls contained in some O alpha. Therefore, uh, no, I don't need this. Okay, I have this. So what I have is then 
E is contained in this union, right? That's my conclusion. Hence, hence this thing, this union, um, this collection is also an open cover. An open cover for E. Well, since E is compact, since E is compact, E should be covered by finitely many of these balls. E is a subset of finitely many of these. Let's say X1, E X1 over 2 union. How many of them? I don't know, but let's say K of them. B X K epsilon x i k x k over 2 for some x1 x k in e all right so finite many of these uh, epsilon x i over 2 balls covers e all right and then we do what let Delta to be the minimum of these radiuses x i over uh, okay so x one over two epsilon x one over two epsilon x two over two up to x epsilon x k over two so I have you know something like this e is the subset and for each x, I choose some ball, right? Uh, here the radius is, let's say, epsilon x. And half of this balls covers E, finitely many of them, and each E x, of course, is contained in some uh, O alpha X. This was our choice, right? I have this. Okay. And finitely many of these balls, actually epsilon over two balls, covers E. All right. Now, this is what I'm uh, now claiming. Okay, uh, let X be an ele any element of E, uh, then E, of course, lies inside one of these balls, Xi, Epsilon, Xi over 2, for some I from 1 up to k because you know e is contained in this finite union therefore any element of e lies inside one of them okay and delta is the minimum of these radiuses now if y is in this ball with center x this x and radius delta then uh, I have what then the distance the distance between y and x i I am looking at this distance well by the triangle inequality this is the less than distance between x and y uh, y and x and then x and x i all right well this distance between x and y is less than delta so this is certainly less than delta and the distance between x and xi x and xi is less than xi over 2 epsilon xi over 2 but delta was the minimum of these numbers right delta is minimum of these in particular it is less than xi epsilon xi over 2 so this thing is less than epsilon xi over 2 
Well, I have another epsilon xi over 2. Therefore, this distance is less than, is strictly less than, I'm sorry, strictly less than epsilon xi. Well, this means what? So that, so that y also lies in this ball. X i epsilon x i. All right. Well, what we have seen is then is the following. You see, I started with any element of this ball. I I and I saw that uh, that element lies here. Hence. And this ball B X delta lies completely X I epsilon X I. But this ball was chosen so that it lies in one of O alpha. So this was O alpha X I was a subset of O X alpha I. Right? Let me just remind you that. Uh, this was chosen so that, you know, this ball lies inside one of the open sets of this original covering. So what we have seen is then is the following. I found some delta so that, so that, uh, if you pick any x, any x, the ball, the ball around that alpha, uh, that x uh, with that radius delta lies completely inside one of these uh, 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 elements of the open cover. This delta, uh, this delta positive, is called a Lebesgue number. Lebesgue number of the covering. Okay. And what it does, let me just remind you, uh, restate it. <clears throat> uh, so what we have this, for any uh, x in E, uh, the ball, the ball, B x delta lies inside one of O alphas for some alpha in the family, okay? So, whenever I have a uh, compact set and uh, open cover for that uh, compact set, there is a positive number, delta, satisfying the following. If I draw any ball, uh, if I ball, a, uh, if I draw a ball around any x with that radius, that ball lies completely inside one of the elements of this open cover. Okay, that's a very important actually result. And such a number is called Lebesgue number. Of course, once you have a Lebesgue number, any number less than this uh, Lebesgue number is also a Lebesgue number, provided that it is of course positive. Right, because it will certainly satisfy the, this uh, inclusion property. All right, so this is uh, our definition of Lebesgue number. Okay, Lebesgue number. Okay, any questions so far? Now I'll tell uh, you why this is something useful uh, here is a application of Lebesgue number theorem uh, let f from x to y be a continuous function if x is a compact metric space
metric space. Then x is uh, sorry, f is uniformly continuous. So uh, on a compact metric space. Uh, for a function to be continuous or uniformly continuous are the same properties, okay? And we will make use of uh, Lebesgue number to prove this uh, result. All right, so let's remember the definition of uniform continuity. Let epsilon be given. Okay, I should be able to find a delta so that if two points are delta close to each other, then their images should be epsilon close to each other, right? That's the definition of being uniformly continuous. All right, this is how I'll uh, proceed now. For any x in x, since f is continuous, we may choose some delta possibly depending on F, uh, x so that so that so that this ball is mapped inside the ball f of x epsilon over 2 okay right this is just the definition of continuity. Since f is continuous, given any point x, I can find a, a neighborhood, delta neighborhood around that x, so that its image is contained in uh, the epsilon ball. But for you know technical reasons, I choose uh, not epsilon, but epsilon over 2. I'll work with the epsilon over 2. All right. Then I have what? This. Uh, of course, uh, balls. I'll play the same trick. X can be written like this, but each X is contained in this ball. Okay. Yes. And of course, each of these balls are contained in x therefore the union is contained in x and thus x is just this union okay so so that this collection Is an open cover. Is an open cover. For the compact space. Space X. Okay. Well, I will not choose the finite open cover. What I will do, I'll choose its Lebesgue number. But since this is an open cover for a compact uh, space, uh, it has a Lebesgue number. So let delta positive be a uh, Lebesgue number. For this cover, for this open cover. Okay. Now I claim that this delta will do the job. Okay. If two points are delta close to each other, then their images will be epsilon close to each other. Okay. That's my conclusion. Right. All right. Now uh, let x, y be two points with. Distance less than delta. 
All right. Now choose choose some point x prime with this property b x delta lies inside uh, b x prime delta x prime i can do this because uh, you know this is a lebesgue number means uh, around if you give me any point the delta ball around that ball, uh, point will lie inside one of the elements of this open cover okay this is an open cover and if you choose any point then the ball with radius the lebesgue number a lebesgue number will lie inside one of these balls okay but then i have what uh okay x and y were delta close to each other then of course both x and y are in this ball right because x is center and y has distance less than delta therefore they both lie inside this ball all right uh, but if you have this then uh, by the choice of this uh, thing we have what you see i had this the image of this ball lies inside this uh, ball hence f of x and f of y lie inside the ball with center f of x prime and radius epsilon over 2 right yeah exactly this okay this thing all right now we are uh, almost done finally finally what is the distance between f of x and f of y the distance between f of x and f of y in the metric space y okay uh, let's say the metric there is rho uh, this distance is less than the distance between f of x prime and f of x plus the distance between f of x prime and f of y but both of these points lies inside this ball therefore the first term is less than epsilon over 2 and the second term is less than epsilon over 2 so that this distance is less than epsilon hence f is uniformly continuous on x why is that let's uh, summarize what we have done i start with any epsilon i found some delta is the lebesgue number of some covering we constructed now if i start with any elements with dxy is less than delta then the distance between these two points is less than epsilon and that's the definition of being uniformly continuous okay <clears throat> so we are done okay uh, do you have any questions so far all right uh, let me uh, okay <clears throat> i'll do uh, 
two more applications of you know uh, compact metric spaces and so on one of them is related to integrability and the other one is related to so-called Weierstrass M test for series of functions let me start with the integrability uh, integrability of functions Riemann integrability let me remind you Riemann Riemann integrability uh, okay of uh, functions I'll talk about integrability of functions of one variable <clears throat> remember that you know uh, let f be a function defined on some interval be any function be a uh, let's say bounded function okay bounded function uh, how do we define Riemann integral remember we divide the interval into sub intervals we compute upper and lower Riemann sums and then we look at the difference and so on let me just remind you that take any partition uh, P what is this this is just a set of points like this okay uh, all right let me say T0 T1 and uh, T0 is just a okay less than T1 and then Tn which is B for a b so here is a and here is b this is t0 this is tn and i divide this interval into intervals like this okay t1 uh, t2 here is i have uh, t i all right, say ti, ti plus one, and so on. Okay, we define uh, this, and we define the norm of p. Norm of p is what? It is the maximum of these differences. Ti plus one minus ti. I from uh, 0 up to n minus 1 so norm of a partition norm of a partition uh, is defined this way I just look at the differences between two consecutive ti's and take its maximum and we denote it as norm of p okay so this means just this maximum all right and we define upper and lower riemann sums uh, the upper and lower riemann sums riemann sums <coughs> of f with respect to this partition are defined by this remember uh, upper Riemann sum of F with respect to this partition is the following it is just the sum of uh, okay uh, all right uh, ti plus one minus ti f of uh, okay uh, m i i from one to uh, no 
0 2 and minus 1 and lower Riemann sum the same thing you have seen this in the first year actually calculus course mi where what are these little mi and big mi this mi is just the supremum of uh, uh, f x in x in ti and ti plus 1 and this supremum exists because we chose f to be a bounded function little mi is the infimum of f of x as x is in ti ti plus 1 okay for i from uh, 0 up to n minus 1 so what I do this let me just uh, remind you what we are doing a b okay and let's say this is the graph of f it doesn't have to be a continuous function it can be something like this and around any point let's say here i have uh, ti and ti plus one okay i choose the maximum and minimum value of f all right so on this interval what is the maximum of f here maximum seems to be or supremum i should say because f doesn't have to be continuous so this seems uh, mi big mi all right and this seems to be the small mi okay so this big mi and this is small mi and what is the Riemann sum Riemann sum is just of course you compute the areas of this rectangle so for the uh, low Riemann sum I take the area of this rectangle and for the uh, big uh, upper Riemann sum I take this mi and multiply it by uh, this so right mi is the supremum and you just compute the area of this rectangle uh, and so on okay so upper Riemann and lower Riemann sums are the followings uh, let me draw you another figure let's say a b and I have this let's say this is my partition okay this is t0 this is t and <clears throat> upper and lower Riemann sums so upper Riemann sums are the red ones I look at the area of this okay so so here the area between uh, I mean under this uh, inside this rectangle the sum is the the lower Riemann sum and what is the upper Riemann sum upper Riemann sum is the one where we take the supremum so I have this 
upper Riemann sums. This time we take uh, this rectangles, okay? All right. And when do we call a function integrable? Well, we call a function integrable if this upper sums and lower sums gets closer and closer to each other. In the limiting case, if they are the same, then we say that the function is integrable so that we may define the area under its graph. Okay, that's the definition. So you recall that <coughs> definition. F is called F is as above, okay, is called Riemann integrable. Integrable. If what happens? If the following happens. If for any epsilon positive, there is some delta positive, so that, so that, for any Partition P of the interval AB uh, with norm of partition is less than delta. We have we have what the upper Riemann sum of F with respect to this partition. Of course, this is something larger than the lower Riemann sum. This is certainly positive, but I want this to be less than epsilon, okay? <clears throat> so, a function is Riemann integrable if this happens. You give me epsilon, I find some delta so that if I divide this interval into sub-intervals so that the longest uh, interval has length less than delta. In other words, norm of P is less than delta. So this, you know, distances, they are all less than delta. Uh, if this is satisfied, then the distance between upper and lower Riemann sums is less than epsilon. What does this mean? What is the distance between upper and lower Riemann sums? It is the sum of these areas between these two, two triangles, the blue triangle and red triangle. <coughs> so it is this area plus this area plus this area plus this area. All these areas adds up to something always less than epsilon. If this happens, in other words, the upper and lower sums, Riemann sums, gets closer and closer to each other as much as you want, then we call the function Riemann integrable. Okay. Uh, probably you have seen this definition in uh, first year calculus course, but I am not sure if you do remember. Maybe in advanced calculus also you have seen this. <clears throat> now, uh, what we will do is the following. Now, do you have any questions so far? I just remind you what we, uh, I mean, what Riemann integrability for functions uh, of one variable on an interval. Okay. The theorem is this. Theorem. Uh, let Fn be a sequence of uh, bounded uh, Riemann integrable functions. Functions uh, converging 
converging uniformly for me to some well since these are bounded functions and they converge uniformly so the function they do converge is also bounded to some f in where again a bounded function on a b the conclusion is this <clears throat> if these fn's are riemann integrable then their limit uniform limit okay is also riemann integrable then f is riemann integrable integrable and moreover the integral over f okay is just limit of the integrals of fn's as n goes to infinity all right uh, of course i forgot to tell you uh, what if these are rem uh, i mean close to each other then we say that f is riemann integrable but the integral is defined as follows <coughs> uh, okay uh, so i didn't tell you what's the integral so let me just continue uh, here of course uh, here uh, this thing is uh, for a riemann integral for a riemann integrable uh, function the integral uh, of uh, f for a riemann integrable function let's say f the integral of f over a b is defined to be the limit which limit this limit so a b f uh, well i have of course f of x maybe dx i should say it is this uh, limit of upper Riemann sums or lower Riemann sums doesn't matter as the as the norm of p goes to zero uh, since upper and lower Riemann sums are you know very close to each other they get close as much as we want these two limits are the same okay because as p norm of p gets uh, smaller and smaller upper and lower riemann sums gets closer and closer to each other and we write it in this way and this common limit is defined to be the uh, integral the riemann integral of f all right okay uh, of course not all functions are riemann integrable right uh, for example this function let me remind uh, you this uh, the function f which function uh, on zero one let's say into r defined by f of x zero if x is a rational number one if x is an irrational number for this function any riemann sum upper riemann sum is zero and lower riemann sum uh, sorry uh, upper one is one lower riemann sum is z uh, zero so for any partition P of zero one, we have 
upper Riemann sum is always uh, one because every interval contains some irrational number and at that irrational number the value of the function is one so the maximum value is one so you always take into uh, rectangles of height one uh, and the total uh, distance is zero one so one unit so this is uh, one and the and the lower Riemann sum is always zero because every interval contains a rational number therefore this is zero and you see that uh, these two Riemann sums will never get closer to each other because one of them is always one and the other one is always zero so that f is not Riemann integrable So our theorem tells us that a function like this cannot be the uniform limit of integrable functions, okay? Because if you have Riemann integrable functions and if they converge uniformly to some function, then the limit function is also Riemann integrable. All right, let me uh, stop at this point in the second hour. I'll prove this and then I'll talk about uh, series of functions and in that uh, part I'll give you Y-Strass M-Test. Okay, let me stop here.